Amen. Amen. Nice come to worship God. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Make, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. We uh, have, have an, Donna has an announcement she's going to make.
God is not too busy. God can answer all prayers all at once. He can hear all prayers all at once because our God is almighty and powerful. And um, so, Elaine. Elaine. Hit her. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> cancer is not of God. You've been healed of cancer before. And the word of God says we are not under the curse of the law. We've been redeemed by the blood of the lamb. And, and, if, and the key is we have to really believe the scriptures and what we speak for. Because if we can say all these words we want, but if we don't believe it in our heart and our spirit, man, it ain't going to take root. We have to believe what the word of God says and let that come so alive in us. And um, I'll give you Keith Moore's site, and he has an awesome book on, on for um, God's will for healing. Because so many people get told different things, well, um, healing's not for today, or God heals something. That's all lies. Yeah, we word. need to stick yeah. to what this word says. The word of God says we are healed. It's a done deal. We are healed. We don't accept the symptoms. We pray against the symptoms. But it's done. He did it on the cross for us. It's all over. And he's really been embedded in that and embedded in me. You know, yeah, I may have these patches on, but I am healed. It's a done deal. I don't accept the symptom. We can't allow the enemy because he wants to defeat us. He wants to get us to think the negative. He wants us to get to go against these patches. People ask, I'm healed. My stomach, I'm healed. It's done. I am healed. You are healed. We all are healed, but we have to keep quoting it. We have to keep saying it, and we have to believe it. And it's done. It's done with God. Amen? Amen. So we're going to keep her in prayer. We're going to pray for her, not keep her in prayer. And then after I pray, I believe it is done, Eileen. It's okay. done, and then I'm just going to thank God for her. That's it. I, I, that's the other thing he's really been dealing with my heart. And we don't have to pray for the same thing over and over and over again. Because that's not what faith is. We pray it, we believe it, and then we thank God for it. And we don't go by what we see or how we feel or any of that. Because that is not what faith is. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And her daughter, too, she said they took a cancerous tumor out of her head. Yeah. And well, it looks like it's done. Is that Ro Rodell? Okay, <laughs> trying to make sure I pronounce it right. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then Troy, which is um, Kathy Frost's son, um, he had a surgery like Tom did, and then I guess he had um, complications or something, um, from what I'm being told. But anyways, he has a perforated bowel, and then it, the infection went into his stomach, so he's had the surgery Tom had was two surgeries to try to get that infection out. Um, so we're gonna pray for him that all the infection's done and um, complete healing totally in his body. Whatever needs to be healed, whatever is going on, God knows, um, and He will be coming out of ICU. Amen. And um, pray for the family because it's very hard on the family and. Um, Roland, or, <coughs> excuse me, also Kathy's husband, um, was diagnosed with cancer. Um, um, but that's not God's report. That's what he was diagnosed with. Yeah, that's the fact, that's the truth, that's right. Amen. The word of God says, by Jesus stripes he's healed. He is going for a treatment, and we're going to pray that he has no complications or whatever, but he is healed. Amen? Hey, Lori. Yeah? Could you keep my Uncle Tony in prayer? He's in the ICU up in Bangor. Your yeah, Uncle Tony? Yeah. Mary's nephew. We're just thanking God. We see it done. We pray for him. Now I'm just going to thank God. Right. Amen. 
for his intervention. I know you guys might think I'm a little off, but I really believe what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what the Word of God says. I, 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 he's just been so much putting that on my heart. And I've done all the same things. And I still mess up sometimes and do it. And then God quickens my spirit. Because we've been taught so many things that don't line up with this. And I, 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 I just know that I know that I know what... God is showing me, and I, I just, and I, I know believe. what he told me, too. Oh, no, I'm not saying that. No. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for healing. Oh, for your leg? Yeah. Yeah, you're healed. It's done deal. Yeah. I've been six years like this. I don't like having this leg so big like this and some things I can't get on. It hasn't been easy. This is the first time I've been able to wear these shoes for years. Praise the Lord. I got them on this morning. I mean, there's a lot of things behind the scenes that people don't know what you go through. But there is not one day that I don't believe in my heart that God is going to heal this body. Amen. Not one day. I refuse to. I, I might get discouraged sometimes. Oh, but well, not well. my belief. <laughs> my belief. We all get discouraged at times, but that's when we have one another to encourage one yeah. another. And just... Believing. Keep going. Yeah. Because we all get discouraged. I'm sorry, I didn't I don't know why I said that. Well no. Maybe You're somebody, believing he's believing. Maybe somebody needs to hear that in this place today. <laughs> it is a done deal. She's healed. Hallelujah. And then who oh, Carolyn. That she has no roommate. I guess her room's really small. And then Haley, Nancy's granddaughter for a job. She just graduated, well, she's graduating this week from college. <laughs> the four years were going fast, though. Oh, oh boy. She raised that lady. Yes. Haley, Bill and Gay's daughter. She oh, my God. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know it. I, I, I know it. Yes, you know. Oh, my gosh. Wow. And I'm so young. We yeah. have. See? I don't remember these guys when they were in diapers. No. <laughs> um, Uncle Tony, Uncle Joe Jr., he's in ICU, you said? Yeah. And they can die for Dan's intervention. Hallelujah. So do you think there's too many prayers for God here? No. no. Do you think God can't answer any of these? Joe. Kathy has a sister that's also fighting cancer, stage four, and she's not saved. It's, um, that's concerning. That's concerning if you're not saved. You know, I, I'm going to tell you, the last few months in my studies with God, God has just shown me how much potential we have as children of God to spread the glorious gospel and give people the hope, mm -hmm. the hope of healing and deliverance. And what is it, why are we so hard-hearted not to want to share that with people is beyond my comprehension. Amen. It is. So when I hear this, I hear this at work. I go out on a limb to share the gospel with people and tell them about the healing power that Jesus had. And then, yeah, I mean, it's our responsibility. It is, Amen. It is undoubtedly the greatest opportunity to spread the gospel out there is in the health system. Look at everybody. They're sick. I know I've got a witness to her. She's a hard case. She just pray that you know what I say to her will sink in and that that heart will grasp it. I pray that you light of the Holy Ghost. He'll give you the words. He won't fail you. We go in there with the intent that this woman is going to be born again. That's right. So that's the first order of business. Amen. I. 
when yeah. I'm on a limb for my sister. And Joe, let me tell you, it wasn't easy because all of my other sisters, you know, they didn't think I should do, do it. But I got her saved. Yeah. And uh, my sister was a, an alcoholic for years and years. And you couldn't discuss anything with her about the Lord. Well, I'll tell you, I stepped out on the limb because I, I knew I had to. That was, I didn't want that on me. And then afterwards, I told them, you know, like two or three months down the road, I said, oh, I, she's saved. I know she is because I spoke to her. They go, yeah, we heard. And I don't care if you go, yeah, we heard or not because I know in my heart that she's saved. And I thank God for that. But my kids, what she did, never said, hey, Nancy, because you stepped out, well, right, just oh, yeah. and you said what you yeah. have to say, no matter what. And this is what's happening in this generation. People will not step out. He puts this, the words, like Pastor Tom said, God puts the words in our mouth. That's right, he does. You want to be consent to say, God will show you what Faith worketh for love. That's right. Yes. Amen. And without love, you can't have faith. <clears throat> That's right. Amen. And Joe, what was Kathy's sister's name? What? Rose. 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 <laughs> um, every day, thank God, both of you. God, I thank you for her salvation. I see her saved. I'm not going by the situation. I'm not going by what she says or what she sees. I'm going to plant that salvation prayer in it. At her, and I'm believing your word. You said you and our households would be saved. I claim your salvation. I'm believing for it. Say no. I'm not going to listen to your God. I don't care how high you say she is. With God, nothing is impossible. Because a lot of these thoughts, the enemy puts in our heads. Well, she'll never. This one will never accept. They're too hard-hearted. No, we we have the power, the authority with our words, what we speak and what we say. And see it done. No matter what it looks like, no matter, no matter what the circumstances, it doesn't matter if it's for healing, if it's for salvation, if it's for provision, if it's for protection, whatever it is, whatever you're going through. We have an awesome God. We have a big God. And He has given us the authority and power to use down here while we're here. And I was thinking, and when you guys were all talking about the salvation, because that wasn't always something easy for me just to talk to people. What are we really afraid about? Are we afraid they're gonna yell at us? Are we afraid they're gonna reject it? What are we really afraid about? Our fear shouldn't even be in the, in the equation. It's what the Word of God says, and He says to go forth, to speak the Word, to witness to people. I mean, and, and just bringing up and, and different things, and then there's always ways to bring God in the picture. Always ways, and and fear has to go because it's not of the Lord. It's the opposite of faith, and, and 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 that goes for all of us. I'm not just saying anybody in particular. I'm just saying that goes for all of us. We all have different areas. We have different things that the enemy tries to put us in fear on. And, but we, we have the authority and power. And nothing, nothing is too big for our God. That's what me and seeing me and my mom were singing Wednesday. Um, nothing is too big for our God. Right. Nothing. Amen. Cancer is not too big for God. No. Um, your sister's salvation, none of it. Nothing is too big for God. Amen. I like, I like what I heard this morning. I heard it before. <clears throat> I heard it before. Um, and, uh, and every time I look at this man, I'm reminded of my father-in-law, Lauren, oh, um, about Jesse Duplantis and his prayer closet. Mm -hmm. That uh, how one time in his prayer closet, he was praying, and God told him, he says, I am. Anybody who watches Go Victory this week will see it on the first session. And uh, just to plug for Victory, Go Victory there. Yeah, <laughs> on Bill Winston. On Bill Winston. But uh, he said that, that a lot of people were in heaven. They were received into heaven, but they never fulfilled their purpose here on earth. And I really think that that's true. I've seen that, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I've seen that in many people's lives. 
um, that uh, uh, have slipped from this place into the next. And we sit there and we say, God took them home. No. You know, the Bible says that there's power, there's life in the power of the tongue. And life or death. Mm -hmm. And uh, you got to remember that we are living in a world system that wants to train everybody, including Christians. Mm -hmm. You know, this, Satan is happy with you being saved. He really doesn't care that you're saved. What he cares about is you starting to step out in the boldness of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. That becomes a totally different story because now you're impacting his kingdom, which, by the way, isn't his kingdom at all. Mm -hmm. It's our kingdom. Amen. Amen. So, I, you know, that's just a little tidbit of thing. It's, a, it's a, uh, you know, <clears throat> you know, we look at these people and say that there's a death sentence on them. They're going to die at that stage four. That's not what the Bible says. The problem is, is nowadays, I'll tell you the truth. The truth is, is that when people get healed in the church, when ten lepers come into the church to get healed, they get healed. Ten, ten lepers leave. And nobody ever returns. And so that's why you see these seats empty. You see people uh, taking advantage of God and his healing, and he won't heal them. And so everybody that went to Jesus got healed. Every one. And so we've allowed the world system. We, you see, we don't take any onuses of our faith. We sit there and say, well, you know, the pastor prayed for me. I wasn't healed, so either he's got a faith problem or, or God just didn't want me to be healed. We've allowed the enemy to convince the church that's as far as our authority goes. I got news for you. You have a part in this too. Amen? And so it, and Jesus says, do you believe I can do this? He's still asking the same question today. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. All right. So I'll pray for these prayer requests. Open in prayer. And then David's coming up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we just, first of all, I just want to thank you, God. I thank you for your healing. I thank you for salvation. I thank you for the Holy Spirit. I thank you that you've empowered us here on this earth. And I, I, I just, I love you, God. I love you so much. And I know everybody here does, Lord. And we just, we, we have come to worship you in spirit and truth here. Hallelujah. I pray for Troy right now. That infection has to leave his body completely in the name of Jesus. He is healed by Jesus' name. And I just thank you for him to feel your presence and the peace and on him. I don't know if he's awake or not, God, but he can still, you can show him things if he's in asleep, God. And I just ask that you just be with him and minister to him, God. I, I pray for the family, God, that you, they have a peace that passes all understanding and that they know that their God has already got this covered, that it's a done deal, that he is healed in the name of Jesus. And I just thank you and I praise you for it, God. I pray for Roland. Lord, that he's completely healed. That cancer can't be in his body. It has no rights or authority to be there, Lord. And, and that the treatment will go well for him, whatever the treatment is, God. And we just, I ask right now, Lord, that you touch Kathy. She, this is her husband and her son. And when you're going through tests and trials, the enemy loves to put thoughts in your mind. God, I'm asking that people would encourage her, give her words here and words there, Lord, that, that she be strong. Strengthen, Lord, that she would have the peace of God that passes all understanding. And for his for his wife and uh, child too, who have COVID, I guess. Um, that's not and that virus has no right to be on their bodies, and we command it to leave their bodies in the name of Jesus and just give them a peace too, Lord, of all that they're going through, God. And I just give you all the praise and all the glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I pray for Carolyn. I still see Carolyn in this church worshiping with us. 
I see it, I, I, I believe in it, and I'm not getting off it, God. And Lord, she would like not to have no roommate there because the rooms are really small. And God, you can make that happen, God. And I just thank you and praise you that you touch her, that you encourage her, that you give her peace that passes all understanding. And um, we give you all the praise and glory for it. We pray for Nancy's granddaughter, Haley, who's graduated from college, God, that you open the right job for her, Lord, where she's supposed to work, God. Just uh, show her, God, and that you make a way where there is no way. And I just thank you for it. I pray for little Joe's uncle, Tony, who's in ICU. God, you know what's going on with his body. And I just, I command his body to line up with the word of God that he is healed. And I just thank you and praise you for it, Jesus. And I give you all the glory. Hallelujah. God, I just thank you for Dan, the intervention. I don't know how you're going to do it, God, but I don't need to know how. I just need to believe that you are going to intervene in this third situation. He's a Christian. He's prayed to you. He's faithful. He's ties. Lord, and you said you would do, um, devour the devourer for us. And I'm just believing that for him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, for Kathy's sister, um, did you give Joe and Kathy the words to minister to her, God? We're believing that she will accept you for salvation, God. That you're going to give them the wisdom and the knowledge and, 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 and strength that you show them what to say. And they're going to thank God every day. I don't care if they have to, how many times if the enemy puts a thought in their head, they're going to go, nope, Satan, I resist you. Get out. My sister Rose is saved. My sister Rose is saved. Kathy, you hear me? My sister Rose is saved. You say it over and over. And Joe, you too. My, uh, my sister Rose is saved. My sister Rose is saved. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you and praise you for it, God. <laughs> We give you all the glory ahead of time. God, we come to worship you in spirit and truth and focus on you, God. On you and nothing else. There may be circumstances going on all around us, God, but we don't have to focus on them. We need to focus on what the word says and embed it in our hearts and believe it and stand on it, God. And we just thank you and praise you, God, for the peace of God to be on everybody in here that may be thinking about things, God. You said that we are to cast all our cares on you, for you careth for us. You said your burden... His burden is easy, and it, no, I lost it. I just had it to. Oh, no, yeah. You got it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. You said, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Hallelujah. You said, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. You said, nothing is impossible with you, God. We All we have to do is believe. Hallelujah, what your word says. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. We give you praise and we give you glory, God, for everything you're going to do here this morning. We've come expecting, we've come expecting to see you move. Hallelujah, we come expecting to, if you're going to use, show us what to do, God. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. And everybody say, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Time to determine our financial future. Amen. Yeah. Not just our physical future. Praise God. Look at him go.
occasionally. Uh, but when I come up here and I say that you're about to determine or you are determining your financial future, that's, you're not just here to throw something in the plate or whatever. You are here to minister to our high priest. The, the offerings of old came to the high priest. And so although we can't see Jesus up here on this platform, we know that he receives our tithe. He receives our offerings. And he is the one that ultimately blesses us. Now we give through men who die, but he does not die. And he blesses these offerings and these tithes forevermore. So you're not just uh, establishing a financial future for today, tomorrow, however long you live for your kids and grandkids, uh, but you are establishing a future of blessings through the heart that you have in your giving. It's all about the heart. Whatever you do, it's about the heart. If your heart is not in it, God is not in it. It's all futile. It's all flesh. And the flesh is death. But the spirit is life and peace. And so we want life and peace. Second mm. Corinthians 9, 6 to 8. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. And he that sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according every person, every man, every woman, according as they, he, she, purpose in their heart. That doesn't mean compulsion. That doesn't mean out of pride. It means in your heart. Because you're bringing that when, when Brother Larry and, and Jim come around with these things, uh, you're giving to the Lord. You're giving to the Lord. Yes, it's going to go into this physical structure, but you're giving to the Lord. And it's from him that you receive. Every man, as he purposes in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves, that's agape, a cheerful giver. And, you know, God is a giver. The more like God you are, the more cheerful you'll be in your giving. Mm -hmm. You'll want to give. It'll be a thrill in your life. When you can give on a, a certain day or whatever, it'll be a thrill in your life. It'll be a thrill. Um, there's no joy like it when you give because you're like your father. You can give. You're a heavenly father. And God is able to make all grace. I suppose that is an era. You know that not, you know that eight verse. He's able to make all grace. All grace. Maybe it should have just said some grace here and there, you know. No. All grace. All grace. He's able to make all grace. Grace is another word for the Holy Spirit. It's one of the functions of the Holy Spirit to bring favor. Favor is rule. Shouted favor, favor unto the mountain. The mountain flattened. The mountain had just one choice. Jesus told us we can cast it into the sea. The mountain has one choice. And that's to go into the sea. The sickness and disease has one choice. Our finances have one choice when we do it according to the word of God to make all grace abound towards you, that you always, having all, that you always, a lot of kind of exclusive words here, huh? always, all, always, all. Sufficiency in some things. No, all things. <laughs> all things. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> May abound to every good work. And in Malachi, uh, Sister Lori referred to part of this just a moment ago. Of Malachi 3, 10 to 13. And I don't think just because it's in the Old Testament doesn't apply to you. The whole Bible applies to you and to me. The whole Bible. Except for the sacrificial laws, the whole which is 
been fulfilled in Christ Jesus, the whole Bible applies to us. The whole Bible. Can anybody say whole Bible? Whole Bible. Okay. <laughs> Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat or provision in my house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And he will not destroy the fruits of your ground. We don't want to produce fruit and then have it destroyed. It has to do with the heart. It has to do with agape, love. It has to do with obedience, which is the core of agape. Shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations, all people, will call you blessed. That's empowered to prosper in every area of your life. Empowered by the Holy Ghost and power. What's his limit? Zippo zero. If he has no limit. And you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. I think he needs it. I think he needs it. If you would hold up your uh, your offering, and then after the offerings are collected, then we will uh, I'll read the scripture the Lord has given me. And uh, we'll go from there. So if you hold them up before the Lord, Father, I thank you for this opportunity for us to uh, bring our offering and our tithes to our high priest. And we, Lord, we, we give this to you with a joyful heart. We come with an eagerness of heart to advance the kingdom, and this is a part of it. We do it in our obedience, obedience in our lives, obedience in our giving, and, and obedience in our, in our speaking, Lord. Our thought life is your thoughts, our words are your words, and our actions are your actions, just like our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I speak a blessing on each person. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The usher can come and take the offering. I just wanted to say something. I was, when I heard Lori praying and, you know, I was just taking it all in, um, it doesn't matter what it is. You know, I was listening to Nancy. Her granddaughter needs a job. Um, it doesn't matter if there's cancer, someone needs recovery after surgery. Nothing, first of all, is too little or too big. Um, some may, when we were away, it was like, pray for my titties. You know, that's important to me. Or well, that's yeah. important to, um, you know, when Nancy's granddaughter get a job. Cancer is, you know, it, it's scary for some people. Um, but nothing is too little for God. Um, it's important to me that when we left our cats that, <laughs> and God knows, he knows what's important to yes. that Amen. individual. Amen. Yeah, so, you know, mm -hmm. he's a good, good God. And I am so thankful. Um, him. And Don, we have four cancer survivors right in this yes, church. Yes, yes. Yeah. So we can ask just Lee, about anything. And to our God. Yes, I'm sorry. Well, well, I ain't oh. been healed of that. Yes, yes. 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 They don't accept that. God already healed of that. It doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 Yes, it doesn't matter what it is. Right. He's a good, good God. That's right. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes.
and four and one. Right. And God gave you a cat. And he took care of me. Yes. Yeah. 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 God loves animals. He made them. That's right.
with his loving kindness and his tender mercy. There's no place, not under you, not above you, not to the left, not to the right, not to the back, not to the front, that you are not completely surrounded uh, by the Lord God's loving kindness and his mercy. And he has satisfied your mouth, my mouth, with good, good words. We have the words of the living God. We have this book that's full of his word. That is what we have in our mouth. And our youth is renewed like the eagles. We're to soar like eagles. He renews us. The word of God, it tells us in uh, Proverbs 4 and 23, that it is medicine to all of our flesh. Medicine to all of our flesh. And the Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. Many in this room are oppressed. The enemy is pushing you down and pushing you down and pushing you down. And we have a God of justice. We have a God of righteousness. You are in right standing with that God. You have a father. And you are in right standing with him. And he will execute judgment on your behalf, which is justice. He will bring justice into your life. He made his ways known to Moses. And, he, and, and his acts to the children of Israel. I don't know about you, I want, him, I want it all. I want to yes. know his ways, yes. and I want to be a part of his acts. Yes. I want to be there when the Red Sea splits. Mm -hmm. I want to be there when the water flows from the rock. I want to be yes. there yes. when the cancer disappears. I want to be there yes. when the victory comes. And the Lord is merciful and gracious and slow to anger. And I tell you, that's a really good thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, probably Lemon should have come more than once in my life. Yeah. But, <laughs> but uh, I'm not an ink spot. <laughs> I'm still going. Because <laughs> God is good. God is merciful and gracious yeah. and slow to anger. And so are we. We're to be merciful and gracious to those around us, slow to anger, plentiful in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us after our sins. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Praise God. <laughs> For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. And as far as the east is from the west, he hath removed our transgressions from us. If you go east, you can never come to the west. And if you go west, you can never come to the east. It's not like north and south where you come to a north pole. Your sins are never before you. Think righteousness and not sin. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.
Thank you, Lord.
Amen. Hallelujah. This next song, awesome. The first line says, my God is awesome. We, we, meaning us, can move the mountains. It used to say he, but we changed it to we. Because with the authority and power that God's given us, we can move these mountains. So what God laid on my heart, whatever your mountain may be, can make it to go. In the name of Jesus, we must sing this. Command that mountain to go. It has to go. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.
truly an awesome, mighty God. I am the great I am. And I inhabit the praise of my people. I see your steadfastness. I see your faithfulness. I see it all, children. And I am well pleased. I am well pleased what you have done. But you still have much work to do. You must go out and bring them in. The harvest is ripe, children. Do not fear, for fear is not of me. I give you the words to speak. I give you the words to speak. You are my witnesses. Step out, children. Step out. The harvest is ripe, ready to be picked, ready to be brought into the storehouse. AOL. You guys remember AOL? 
America Online, you had chat windows and stuff like that. The, it was the dawn of the, the World Wide Web as, as we know it. And, uh, and uh, you know, they used to consider people who spoke in tongues uh, to be an, an occult. That's right. Yeah, they did. Okay? Yeah. And, uh, but uh, I thank God that we had moved away from that into realizing that this is, hey, folks, uh, unless the church wakes up and realizes this, we are the, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the last days, as spoken about in Joel. And so, and, uh, you know, people talk about revival. Revival, revival, revival. Oh, before Jesus comes, there's going to be a revival. I got news for you. We've been in the revival. Okay, since that initial outpouring some 125 years ago, what's happened is, is you and I have become comforted. We've become used to the things of God. We've become, uh, we've gotten so saturated uh, with his presence that we disregard it. There's no more sense of reverence or holiness in the church. Amen. We've forgotten who saved us, mm -hmm. how he saved us, what he has promised us. I like, I like this fact. I think that uh, when, when I hear uh, Jesus say that he used to cast out demons with the finger of God, right? The part I like is in Ephesians, that when God finished this work, he used his hand, uh, which repre represents strength, right? To raise Jesus Christ from the dead. Right? And, and do you think it was all that hard for God uh, to raise Jesus from the dead? No. Absolutely not. And hell yeah, right. had no claim on him. Amen. None. Okay? He had, he had not sinned. He wasn't worthy of that penalty. He went there for you and I. Yeah. And, and see, see, we've become so accustomed to it. We sit there and shout, hallelujah, praise the Lord. He has saved me. But you know he wants to save those people too. Yes, he does. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've, yeah. we've become so, so inward focused. And we aren't comfortable in church. And we got to have nice chairs and, and, and sound systems that, that are top quality. And air conditioned systems before we think that, listen, I'm telling you what, folks. If good looks was enough to do it, this church would have had it. Yeah. This this is a nice church. Yeah. By any standard. Yeah. You go to any other church in town. You go look at there. It looks old. <laughs> we don't. And listen, we, you know, the thing is, is we got to have a burden. we got to have compassion. we got to realize that there are spiritual principles here in the operation. And we've got to examine ourselves and our hearts to make sure that it isn't the enemy using us to stop other people from coming to know who Jesus Christ is. And, and you know, we hear these testimonies, and I don't know how many hundreds of billions of dollars that Americans spend in health care, in, in prescriptions, and doctors, and no disrespect there. But but listen, it's not something um, we, we can expect that next year it is going to rise as it has uh, for a long time here. We're looking to Uncle Sam to pay our medical bills and provide everything for us, everything. The Bible doesn't teach that principle. It really doesn't. And so we only get things as, as we reach into the kingdom of God through faith and bring them into this reality. And so we got to lay hold of these things, understanding that God doesn't want a bunch of spoiled children out there, uh, walking because listen, if you wanted, if you really wanted that, when you got saved, he would have filled your your checking account. He would have, he would have given you a four hundred one k. And but listen, those are worldly systems. You see, and we've allowed those systems to seep into the church, and to blind us, and and to hold us back and restrain us from being what God has called us to be in these last days. A powerful force to be reckoned with. Amen. One who realizes and recognizes that when Jesus Christ 
was raised from the depths of hell by the hand of God that every provision that you would need now and for the rest of your lives was provided for right then and there. you got to wrap your mind around it. You really do. I can remember when my father, my father was in his last days. I'd go visit him. I was up in Prescott. I was just beginning to walk with God, learning how to be led by the Holy Ghost. Went up to Presque Isle and had no clue what I was doing, especially in Prescott. <laughs> the coldest winter or summer I have ever experienced. I mean, that was like, man, I don't want to be called. You have to wear coats in the summertime. And you know me, I like wearing short pants. I'll wear short pants until November. You know what I mean? I, I, I wear short pants until snow flies. That, that's who I am. I mean, but, but you go up there, it is cold. Right. No clue about what you're doing with me up here. I want to send you to go work for this company called Alpha and Omega. That was the beginning of it, and I learned a lot of things since that, that day. That got me involved with computers and <coughs> off, uh, off to where I'm at today. But I would come home and, uh, on weekends, and my father would grab a hold of the Word of God, and he had gotten saved. And uh, he would take the Bible and just lay it on his chest. And he said, As, you know, when he thought about that, that this was the word of God, and it is, you know, and, and we know it to be Jesus personally. He said his pain would disappear. Now I thought that that was a remarkable thing, and uh, you know when we when we're so focused on what's going on around us, when we look at what He wants us to look at, the things all of a sudden start to diminish. And so this church has been through. Dozens, dozens of pastors. Some have been here for, I think the longest was 14 years. Some as short as just a few years. The church here has had a reputation as a pastor killer. We were told not to come here before we came here. But uh, I found out, you know, I've learned, I've wised wise up over the years to find out that uh, not everybody in church is from, come, or at least on the same level as you are. And, uh, and uh, had we listened to them, we wouldn't have been here at all. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I believe that God sent us here for a purpose and for a reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and I can guarantee you that there's an enemy that likes sticking close to our tails, and I know it. Mm -hmm. That if we let our guard down for just one moment, He's more than willing to destroy every work we have laid our hands to. That is not biblical. Okay? We just read Psalm 103 that, that he will cause our fruit to remain. Amen? And listen, my fruit is not in buildings. My, my fruit is in people. Amen. And so the enemy has stolen a lot of people out of this ministry. There's been a lot of things the people have said and taken heed to. They have fallen for lies and deceptions. And listen, I don't run and chase after all these people because I've been running and chasing a lot and missing the fact that where I'm supposed to be focused is right here on God's Word. Amen? Amen? Because that's really where it happens. That's where the lives are transformed. I, I was reading, I ended up reading the... Uh, uh, Luke, and you know me, I'm working in the te Old Testament always, and, and somewhere in the New Testament, I like doing that. To, and I finished up Luke in the end of Luke, and you know, Luke, you know, the conclusion of Luke had been totally different than the other Gospels. You know, Luke was a physician, a doctor, and, but there was, there was something that caught Luke's attention that didn't, uh, apparently hadn't caught the, the attention of the other apostles, and, and that's okay. I like that dynamic because it gives me different views on, on what was going on there. 
But but you read about this story where where uh, these guys, uh, you know, walking down this road, uh, just talking about all the events that happened in Jerusalem, right? And, and to have Jesus come right up to them, right, and start talking to them and questioning them, what are you talking about? And 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 these guys were surprised that Jesus didn't know about the story, what had transpired in. In, uh, in Jerusalem over the last several days. They were like taken away by it. These guys were disciples. They were disciples, yet they did not recognize Jesus. They did not. Luke was very attentive to pay attention to that. It's not the first time. You'll notice that if you finish your conclusion the last two chapters of Luke, you'll notice that finally, what brought them to their attention was what? Does anybody remember? Yeah. When Jesus broke bread and he blessed it. There was something they saw and their eyes were opened. Amen? Amen. And so, you know, for people to see Jesus in us, they need to be seeing something different too. Amen? Amen? Before that enlightening opening their eyes. And, and you go on to read later in Luke where, where these, guys, these guys were disciples of Jesus. They walked with him. They had the claim to fame. Yet when he was in their midst, they couldn't recognize him until he opened their eyes. And so what is it different about the church today? What is it going to take to open the eyes of the world. You see, we like to think that we're correct and accurate in all of our thinking. But I will tell you firsthand, in a church, a denomination that was birthed in miracles, in tongue-talking people, we have become a big business all across America. And that, unfortunately, is a sad thing when we no longer recognize Jesus or who he is. Amen. Yes. The miracles have disappeared. We have an occasional healing, uh, a back healing here, or a back healing, maybe a headache there. And we saw that in the New Testament, in Jesus' home, hometown, mm -hmm. where they didn't honor nor respect him. Mm -hmm. We are in that place today. I will tell you firsthand that if this government, and I don't care who it is, the Democratic or Republic, if they don't respect the things of God, the wrath of God will come down on the White House. Yes, amen. I'm not trying to be political. I'm just trying to be real here. 60 million babies. That's right. 60. So, and we think here that, that uh, you, you know, and I know this, there's a lot of young people out there, they don't know the sacrifices that this generation has made. I sweep my arm across here because, well, there's a lot of veterans in here. We have served in the military. And they don't know the sacrifices made in wars to keep freedoms in democracy and spread that throughout the globe. They really don't. They don't honor history. They're willing to cancel it and get rid of it and establish something totally new and unbased on anything, heritage or anything like that. And it just breaks my heart to see these young people do that. It really does. We're the ones that have got to carry the flame from that. We're the ones that have got to shout that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. That he, he still heals people today. Yeah. Yeah. He still delivers the alcoholic, the drug addict, those that are addicted, those that are in bondage. And we're the ones that claim and proclaim that message to a lost and dying world. The church has got to stop being so inwardly focused that they're no longer looking outside the doors. There are people dying out there yes. and they're yes. going yes. to hell. Does yes. that bother you? Yes. Yes. Does that bother you? Yes. 
You need to be resolved on them. They need to see something in you that is different Amen. than the rest of the world. Yeah. It's not about being a politician. It's not about being a Republican or Democrat. It is about being a child of God and knowing what he has died to provide you with. Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, boy, this is going to get good. That's not even my notes here this morning. <laughs> boy. It just, it, it so concerns me. It really does. I was uh, praying over, over my message, as I usually do. Um, I'm not here preaching what I want to preach. I'm here preaching your word, what you sent me to do a long time ago. I'm not here to make friends, okay? I'm here to be your brother and tell you that if you're blindly going on, if you think that you can defeat the enemy in your own flesh, you have been deceived, okay? And to sit here and say, that the gifts and the anointing of the Holy Ghost is something of a different age. It was back 125 years ago when people used to sing and shout and praise the Lord and hallelujah to the wee hours of the morning. If you think that those days are over, I've got news for you. The enemy is still working hard to suppress the church. He wants you to shut up. Shut up, Christian. You can be saved. Don't do anything else. Be a bench warmer. He probably finds good churches for them to be bench warmers in. Isn't that a, you, you think the devil needs some people in church? <laughs> can I tell you a little bit of military background I might have? Might not be much. But I do know this. I do know that your enemy likes to plant spies. Okay? For, for one purpose, one purpose only. <laughs> Sit there and say, you know, what are they preaching? Are they talking about the blood of Jesus? Are they talking about the gifts of the Holy Ghost? Mm -hmm. You know, we better shut them guys up pretty quick. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Is the church has become and a platform of entertainment. And you know I was offended greatly when, when the leaders of this country started shutting down facilities all across this nation and, and classified me, the church, as being entertainment. I got news for you. I will not be very entertaining in heaven when I stand up and say, Father, I testify that, that the God, the truth, you are holy. You are righteous, and that no sin would stand before you. I, Father, I said that I believed your word. Most people don't believe his word. They really don't. Dr. David said this morning, the, the entire Bible. And I thank God that we're Gentiles. Because you and I would really struggle to be Jewish Christians. Okay, because those guys were, they were hard, they were real faithful Christians. Uh, you know? We won't go there. But anyway, you like that introduction? Yeah. It's, it's, it's all true. It really, you know, can I share with you something? You know, I, I, I know we're short on time. I was, you know, this whole gifting things, and, and we've already made a pretty point blank. I don't care who you are. Who you are. You have a gift from God. Notice, I don't care who it is, you have got a purpose in the kingdom of God. And, uh, uh, and we, we so blatantly just disregard the things of God. And so the Holy Spirit said to me, he says, if my spirit, my Holy Spirit, is in an environment in which they encourage people 
to move in the Holy Ghost such as we do, right? They encourage people to listen to the Spirit, to, to be led by the Holy Ghost. What do you think those same people are doing and do nothing in the church? What do you think that they're doing in the world where they're opposed, where they're, they're fought at every end? They're silent. They're silent. Now listen, we live in the most liberal state in the nation. There is no, no more liberal state in this country than here in the state of Maine with only 1% of the population going to church. Something is wrong about that. And I can tell you here that God did not send wusses to come fight this battle. He wants the Holy Ghost to have his way in this place. And it's about time that we surrender our flesh and, and put it down and let him rise. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I want to see him rise. Yeah. There's only one way he is going to rise. Is if we allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives, to change and trans. Listen, if you were perfect when you were born again, you would have disappeared on the spot because God wouldn't have wanted you to be able to spoil it. Not a person that has ever accepted Jesus Christ in the course of our ministry ever disappeared on the spot. There was more to salvation there. There was a character that God wanted to change. He wants to raise a mighty roaring lion on the inside of every one of us. Amen? Amen. To somebody that doesn't know limitations Amen. or hold back. Listen, when they're walking around, they are walking around like they are king. Devil, you come around me. I got news for you. <laughs> and listen here, devil. I'm going to have fun doing it. I should. That's the way it should be. I mean, you hear people that say, oh, I don't want to go to prayer meeting. Well, why? Well, because my life goes to hell. Every time I go in a prayer meeting, and bills pop up, cars blow up, toasters burn up, everything goes bad. That's because the enemy of this world is using these devices to stop you. Could you imagine going to heaven, your father in heaven, saying, why didn't you go to prayer meeting? Oh, well, because every time I started getting involved in that church, my toaster would burn up. <laughs> I just figured it wasn't for me. Or bills would come in. Something unexpected. You got your eyes on the wrong thing. You, you got your eyes on the wrong goal. Amen? Amen. Jeez, I didn't even turn to my notes yet here. That's <laughs> four. You guys are pretty tired. Oh, yeah, that's right. You went in the session now. What's that? You're led by the Holy Spirit. I prayed that this morning. <laughs> no notes because you're led by God. I'm going to take some of your water, Lori. That's why I left it here. David, I'm sorry. I forgot to give you a water last week. I thought of that the other day. No problem. Oh, my God. <laughs> I guess you didn't need any. <laughs> God gives me some water. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, you know, we got to ask ourselves, I mean, you know, yeah, how many times I've gotten called to go to hospitals? You know, to even pray with people, I didn't know. I didn't know from. I hate to say Adam because I actually know more about Adam than I do them, right? And I'm willing to do that with anybody. You know, I, I, I can remember Larry and I having a good, cool Sunday afternoon. Went on a bike ride to Brewer to go pray with a man who would die some 10 minutes after we left. 
What an impact. And I thank God for his Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost knew he was going. You know, in, in the words that we said, we prayed with the man before we left. You know me, I get into a situation like that, I always say, nonchalantly, Lord, I thank you for forgiving me of my sins. That you washed me and cleansed me and made me whole. Left that place, he was just as happy as could be. Ten minutes later, he's dead. We're still on the road. No, 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 no. You see, I'm not trying to scare you here. I'm just trying to tell you, you've got purpose. You've got reason to be here. You guys aren't wimps. You hear me? Stanley, you've been through a mess after a mess with this church. Yeah. But you have hung in there and remained faithful all these years. You know there's something to be said about that. Yeah. Amen? I, and, and I know that. I recognize that. But I also know this, Stanley, this is not all that God has for this church. I've been 21 years here. 21 years. I wasn't in diapers then. <laughs> <laughs> I say we need to rock Pittsfield. Amen. I think and believe in my heart that we gotta change Pittsfield to praise him. We gotta take the pits out of Pittsfield and put some celebration into this place. Some life, amen. And so the enemy has decimated this place. Because people have allowed him that authority to do that. The soul with all our young children and sent them off to places, ungodly places, cities and towns, and, and, and for, for, for them looking to seek after money and stuff. I believe that God is going to replant this church. He is going to change the dynamics of it. Okay, because I want to be a man of faith. You guys with me? Yes. I believe God's been wanting something special for this church for a long time. And we have been praying and seeking God to do something with this place for a long time. But I also come to the conclusion that here's not the place to do it. We don't have the room to stretch our wings here. We don't have the facilities. We need to get out front of these people and let them know that every day they drive on these busy streets, they're going to see a church sign that reminds them that Jesus Christ shed his blood, that you could be in heaven. God. But you need to make that choice. Yes. You need to be a part of that church. But and, and let, let me get into the gifts in here. The, the praying in the Holy Ghost, I will tell you, you know, and, and I've shared this with you before, that, that I didn't understand what the Holy Spirit was in praying in tongues until, until I did it so much, right, that, that my friends started telling me, hey, you're going to go crazy doing praying in tongues like that. I, I went from Friday night parties, alcohol parties, right? You don't understand that, right? I'm sure you guys have. I mean, I would rock the neighborhood. I had a Fisher stereo system, 2,000 watts. When I came, when, when I was off for the weekend, everybody knew it. Yeah. It was party time. Yeah. And you know, my house used to have people coming and going. I didn't know who they were. A lot of, I, I mean, just, just man, you just come. It's a party there. Lori was one of them. <laughs> store for us, huh? Yeah, so, so, you know, when I, got, when I got saved, I was excited, and I'm still excited. Mm -hmm. I haven't changed that. 
You know, my old stance of being a Mormon, it hasn't changed since the day I've been saved. Yeah, I'm excited to be a Christian Amen. and to think of the possibilities that God has in store for us. You, you know, it's just amazing. But, but you know, my Friday, went, Friday night prayers went to Friday night prayer meetings. I wasn't bringing in the crowds anymore. Who <laughs> <Where> did I go? <laughs> they all made me. I love it. Yeah. They, were, they didn't see praying in tongues as being as enthusiastic as I did. And thank God that we did have a few of them that did. But, uh, and we did that. We would pray clear through the night. Amen. You don't hear people doing that. And, and uh, you know, come Saturday morning, we'd be tired. But I would tell you what. I was refreshed and energized. You know, you don't know what praying in tongues will do for you. When, when you realize that you're praying the absolute perfect will of God into your life, you cannot go wrong. Amen. You can take a mess Amen. and straighten it out. Amen. Amen. Uh, he was working on my character all those times. And I didn't realize it. He gave me a joy and was really planting deep seeds into my heart. Yes. Stuff that would hold me fast, hold fast in my life. But I recognized he changed my character. And I didn't realize, I didn't come out of prayer meeting Saturday morning and say, hey, I'm a more kind, loving individual than I was Thursday night. I didn't know that. Until I started experiencing situations with people. That's where I saw the true power of God, that he was changing me. And that I could forgive people. And that I could love people. And so praying in tongues, there's more to it than just sitting here and uttering a word or two of prophecy in the church, even though that, that is very important. That is a ministry to the body of Christ, to edify the body of Christ. But listen, your prayer life needs to exceed uh, what we do here in church. By far, you should, be, you should have your own personal prayer closet this is intimate time that you spend with the Father. And I will tell you what, when, when you get out of that prayer closet, when you've prayed in tongues and you've prayed in English and you've put your whole, whole heart into it, and then you encounter that person that looks so sad, so depressed, on the verge of suicide, that, that's hopeless, that, that are confused by this generation. They have no clue what sex they are. I mean, come on. That is, that is <laughs> animalistic. It really is. They're confused. And you sit there and you say, the blood of Jesus Christ died for him. I need to get a hold of him. Somebody laying in their deathbed I, you know, I will tell you this firsthand. I mean, I love the church of God. I really do. I was led to it by dad. And, uh, but I've come to find out, man, I think that they've been pretty standing, standing pretty still in their, their faith departments. When I go up to ministers, my own peers, and I talked to him. I learned, and learning, trust me, this is a process, okay, with your tongue. I want you to understand that. That when somebody says, oh, I hear you have prostate cancer, I sit there and I say, you have no idea what that doctor thought, that it was it. It was all over. And uh, Stage four. I mean, he thought this thing had spread. He says, yeah, but I'm healed. I'm healed. David, I am healed. I'm healed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they look at you and you say, yeah, we know God's healing you. <laughs> How many times have I encountered that? Do you realize that if I would have agreed with that, I would have been agreeing that God's healing is a process. Sometimes it is. Don't get me wrong. 
Because I'm Jesus like this, so I'm really wrong there. But I would have agreed with him because I have convinced myself I was already healed. Yeah. So, so now I'm correcting my peers by saying, no, by his stripes I was healed. Mm -hmm. So this is really a transformation in thinking. And I really believe that the body of Christ really needs to be awoken like those disciples were at the end of, of Luke, chapter, the last two chapters. I don't remember the verses I did on the them. I shared them with Warriors. I said, look, man, these guys have been walking in the way with Jesus. I mean, they had Jesus right there. Right? And still, they had no clue of who he really was until he opened their minds. So that's what I'm going to pray today. I'm going to pray Revelation. We need to know Jesus. Amen. And it's not just songs. I love songs. Now the world told you never lose your song. That's a great thing. But we need a deeper understanding and understand that it's truly a fight and battle out there in a worldly system that is not going to like the way that you're talking, that you're ministering, that you're believing that people can be saved. And that people can be healed of these deadly diseases and these horrible things uh, that, that the enemy himself likes to subject them to and then turn around and blame God. Did you ever think of that? Well, I've, I've given that some thought here. How many Christians have gone to heaven and sat there and said, Well, God, you sent me here. You gave me the disease. And, Great is his mercy towards us. <laughs> so, God gives you a backhand. Boy, I'm going to tell you what. No telling where you're going to wind up. Saturn, maybe, maybe, another, no, maybe another galaxy. You don't want to give you a backhand. But, uh, and so I want to encourage you here to use the gift that God has given you, not just in the church setting, because that's only part of the gift. It's the diverse tongues. And so, and we know that these, you know, in the environment that we're heading into, there are the lost that is coming through the door that are going to hear these words spoken in tongues. And it's going to confound them. It's going to confuse them until the person that has enough faith stands up and gives an interpretation of what that is. And I'm going to tell you what, sometimes these are comforting words that somebody that is lost that is desperate and maybe maybe even considering ending their own lives needs to hear that. Then, then there's, you know, well, I can't, there, we don't have enough time here today. I, I, can, I know this one minister. It happened to him 19 times. He had an airplane. I'm trying to figure out if we want an airplane or not. It's a good song. Oh, yeah, that'll, that'll stir some controversy. I want a jet. What? <laughs> but but uh, anyway, this man had a, had a jet. He traveled all over the country, all over the world to different meetings. And he said 19 different times that he has gotten up and started speaking in an unknown tongue. Unknown tongue. Okay? This was no different than the same tongues he was using in church that Sunday morning. Right? Sounded like the same thing over and over again. Right? And so he stood up 19 times just to have every one of those encounters where somebody came back and said they were speaking a perfect dialect in their native language. Declaring the glories of God. Amen. That's what we should be doing, right? Yeah. Amen. Why don't you yeah. stand with me? I didn't even get my notes today. That <laughs> you're going to have to suffer to be so after Mother's Day. Did you get anything out of today? Yes. Yeah. Yeah.
Listen, we are a mighty army. We're, listen, that world wants to rid, <laughs> rid you of it. They want to get you rid of you first. That's really what I just wanted to say. They don't want to hear your witness. They don't want to hear about your testimonies. I mean, they don't want your lifestyle. They, they think that Christianity is bondage to, to a God that says yes and no. When it's complete freedom, it's absolute freedom. And, and, and I thank God for it. To, but, but we can't be comforted by the experience of being born again some 28, 30, 40, how many, ever, how many years that's been? Yeah. If, if that's all we've ever become, then, then yes, heaven will receive you. But know this, that your minister that is standing before you is not content with leaving this planet without wreaking a lot of havoc on the, the Satan's territory. Amen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've got the victory. You gotta believe you've got the victory too. Amen. You, have to walk. you gotta remember, yes. You've got to remember that every provision, everything you need to be successful in this life has been provided to you through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's your choice, your decision. But I will not. I will not be settled for mere, meager existence on this planet. Amen. Yeah. And so I'm going to pray the same thing for you. You guys want a little bit of that fire? Yes. Oh, we're going to pray some of that fire down from heaven. Amen. 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 There's some Holy Ghost boldness here. I mean, you don't know what you're going to say to that person. Just open your mouth and start there. Uh, even if you stutter, uh, 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 you know, God will be there for you, really. Yeah. He'll sit there, oh, look at my little child there stuttering. His first words of faith, <laughs> hallelujah. You'll be able to play that on the DVD player in heaven. Remember the first time you got the boldness to witness to somebody? Amen. Yeah. You were stuttering. <laughs> oh, I did it. That's the important That's right. right. Oh, you're such a great thing, my little child of light. Amen. Not a child of darkness. Child of light. Yeah. And so we're going to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your healing. We pull that provision from heaven. The Father, the things, the symptoms, and all those things, Father, now that the enemy tries to place on our minds. They are not greater than your word. Period. And Father, we thank you that we are healed. Past tense. And Father, we'll remind ourselves just as many times as we need to, to yes. do that. And that we are healed. Healed. The provision's been made. And the conditions have been paid for. And this is under the curse of the law. And we are not subjected to those things. We are children of, of light, children of freedom. Mm, yeah. And Father, I pray for this church. And Father, I, I sense and feel, Lord, a replanting of this ministry, this body of believers, God. Father, we decree that you open up the doors for us. Send them angels. You promise me Full fire ministry. Amen. Yeah. Oh, we thank you. Give us a heart. Give us love for the lost, Father. Doesn't mean we'll be an evangelist. But Father, there are people that are going to heaven that don't even know that there's a Jesus to save them anymore, which is totally different than the environment that I came out of years and years ago. When they say used to teach about God in schools, they don't even do that anymore. And Father, we know the statistics that 80% of every child that we send to a secular college, Lord, they come out not believing you anymore. We take hold of that. And Father, we need these people to know that there is yeah. something 
different about being a believer, that we are privileged, that we are ambassadors for Christ. And Father, I pray this fire into every soul that's here today. Lord, that we would not be content. Move us. And Father, I pray for our families. Lord, there are those who have struggled in this church for many years. And, and Father, I've seen the struggle when I first came into this church where, where spouses or others had been offended, God. And Lord, they never returned to church. They didn't want nothing to do with church. But Father, we're praying differently for these people. God, reveal yourself to them. Open their eyes that they might see God, just as these disciples did. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that we are called your children and that we can call you Abba Father. Bless us, Lord, as we go and as we come and every place we set our feet. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, Donna, you never said Yes, I do. I may not have to know today, but I think the date was May 15th, because i got to know how much food to have. Yeah. <laughs> what did you say? You mean June? You mean June?